in an age when the world takes jet travel for granted, the backroom boys of aviation are still opening doors to new knowledge. Here at Boscombe Down on the edge of Salisbury Plain, test pilots and scientists seek out the flaws that must be put right before new planes are released to the fighting services. And it all helps to make flying safer for the millions who now go by air. In this super hangar, one of Britain's biggest, some of the planes are being critically checked before being flown to their operational limits. This Victor bomber is having its landing gear tested. And now it's weighed on scales that measure loads of up to 120 tons to within ounces. From this airfield that was in use in the First World War, a variety of planes take off today on flights of discovery, watched by cameras that will tell their own story to the boffins. This comet is a flying laboratory, carrying the latest aids designed to take more of the load off pilots and navigators. Here are complex devices that will show a pilot his precise position at any given moment. And with air traffic building up over such busy routes as the North Atlantic, the need to fix a plane's exact position quickly becomes more vital. Inside the comet, more cameras to film instrument readings for later analysis and to scan the ground. When the plane's instruments indicate it should have arrived over a certain mark on the ground, film is shot to prove just how accurate the navigation has been or how far out. This Beverly transport plane is out on a dropping test with a Harvard for company. The camera-toting Harvards are the spy planes of Boscombe Down, hanging on to other planes during tests such as this and filming all that goes on. This test is to show how loads can best be dropped safely and the effects of unloading on the plane's stability. The shadowing camera planes help the scientists to learn as much as possible from each flight, but often many flights are needed to complete one test. Here's a way of finding out what happens when a pilot ejects from a cockpit. This pilot, called Horace, never won his wings, but he's built like a man. The canopy is painted to enable cameras filming the test to show the breakup more clearly. And now, away he goes, caught in a blast of air from the blower that can be adjusted to represent different speeds. A hard life for Horace, and no danger money either. But at least the boffins try to shoot him out and catch him without damage. Did he get away with it? He'll be examined for injuries, for the bump he might have taken on the knee as he left the cockpit, or the bang on the head. And the cockpit itself comes in for a close look too, to see how it stood up to the ejection and whether changes will be needed. But now, a real breathing pilot. He's trying on a pressure suit. The higher you fly, the more the air pressure around you falls off, causing you to black out or even worse. But before the danger limit's reached, this suit inflates and the visor snaps shut, automatically enclosing the pilot in his own atmosphere. Suits like this have to be perfectly tailored for comfort as well as safety to fit the individual flyer. Modern airliners have pressurized cabins to protect passengers. But this cabin is the boffin's own chamber of horrors, where pilots learn from experience what loss of air pressure means.
down goes the pressure, leading to a loss of oxygen. And this is what happens to the pilot's confident writing. He's suffering from anoxia, and it's just like being drunk. The first signs of oxygen starvation vary between people. The nervous system is affected, and they suffer a range of itches and pains. Now the oxygen's back, and this happens. But he may have a hangover for the rest of the day. This is all part of the service at this Ministry of Aviation Center, where planes take off on test flights to the Arctic and the tropics, and places as far away as Woomera in Australia, Fort Churchill in Canada, and the Persian Gulf. But here's a midget for less exotic travel. It doesn't need a runway so much as a decent sized backyard. Flying it is its designer, a Boscombe Down Boffin, Wing Commander Wallace. Look, no hands. They say anybody who is anybody in aviation turns up sometime at Boscombe Down's bar, where scientists and RAF and Navy pilots get together. With the nearest city eight miles away, the airfield has its own social life its clubs and societies, including this one for model car enthusiasts. But some just can't keep away from aeroplanes. And this is one hobby that needs the wide open spaces of an airfield to make it go with a zing. Now back to work, and a job for a threesome. A javelin, a buccaneer, and a meteor. The javelin is a pacer plane with instruments so finely set they can be used to measure the accuracy of the speed and height instruments of other planes, in this case the buccaneers. The meteor's job is to take pictures. Cameras are among the most important tools for the scientists of Boscombe Down. Here they're out filming a reserve parachute test. Paratroopers have been finding that their reserve chutes often fail to open once the main canopy has already spread. So, depending on the wind, RAF parachutists jump every day for the boffins. And again, that reserve chute has failed to open. still another try. This time it works, as it does in one jump in two. The buffins must find out why it doesn't open more often, or for that matter, every time. But at least this descent, no more tricky than stepping off a bus, should have pleased them. For the business of those who work in this back room of the air is safety. Their motto, Probe Probari, means to test with integrity.